Hi, I am Mirko Böhm, an authorized Qt trainer from KDAB. Welcome to this learning video based on the material for the Qt Essentials training course. With these videos, we'll be giving you key insights into Qt. We will also demonstrate the type of in-depth training available in the classroom-based Qt Essentials training course. In this first video, we will introduce you to writing your first Qt application. As in every decent programming class, this will be the Hello World application. To write this application in Qt, you need to know about two concepts. You need to write the source code itself, and you also need a way to build the source code on your operating system. Qt is a toolkit to develop uh, applications for several different target platforms, which means we cannot build the software inside our usual IDE. We need to have a common way of all the, for all the target operating systems to build the software. And this is what we're going to show you now. In this slide, you see the source code for Hello World. We will walk through it and explain the, different, the, the meanings of the different lines of code. And um, then we'll show you how to build this piece. The first line of code is the include statement. We're including cute GUI header. This header gives us all the classes that we need in this application to, um, to show a window on the screen. The next line is the beginning of the main function. Qt uses a very regular main function like every other C++ program. The first line in main almost always is the instantiation of a Q application object. You need a Q application object to use the Qt facilities, for example, to connect to the screen and show a window on the screen. So you will always create this, applica this Q application object as the first object in the application. The next line of code creates a QPushButton object. QPushButton is a Q widget. We'll talk about that later. Um, so it will be visible on the screen. We're passing in an argument. This is the text, hello world. That's the text the button is supposed to show when it's visible. We're creating the button with new. This is how you usually create widgets. The button, by default, will be invisible unless we tell it to become visible. That's why in the next line of code, we'll, calling, we'll be calling show on this button. The show function tells the button that it's supposed to be visible once the application is starting. Um, the next line of code is a curious one. It, call, it says return app.exec. First of all, it's the return statement, so if this line returns, the program ends. But the program is not supposed to end right away. The program is supposed to show that window on the screen until we close it. Which means that this call to exec will not return until the window that we're now showing is closed. The window is the one that you see in the screenshot. It's a regular window integrated in your usual desktop, so it has a close button. The return app.exec line will continue until this window is closed, and then when we close it, the application will exit. The next step would be to build this software and then to run it. For that, we'll be using QMake. This is the next thing we'll show you. As I said, the second part of Hello World is to actually build the software. To build the software, we'll be using a, a tool called QMake that comes with Qt and is part of your regular Qt installation. Um, QMake processes project files. Project files are descriptions of your project. They contain basically a list of all the resources needed to build the software. In our case, all the resources we need are the source file main.cpp. So we will write a project file that contains a line listing main.cpp as our only source file and also will tell QMake that this is an application. This is all the information QMake needs to know to build a make file, usually, to build the software using the make tool for the platform that we're um, compiling for. QMake project files are usually very simple. In our case, it contains two lines, and um, we will then run QMake to generate a make file. This is how QMake is used. You go to the directory where your source code is located, you call QMake with the project file, and the result of this call will be a make file. This make file is tailored to the make tool for the platform that you're using. So it might look the same, but it is different for different operating systems. You then call your regular make program. The make program takes the make file and follows the instructions, instructions in it to build your program. The result of this call to make is your application, or whatever you're trying to build, unless there was an error. If make succeeded, then you will have the application sitting in the same directory, and you'll be able to run it. And then you have Hello World written, compiled, and started. 
and this is your first Qt project. I will now show you how to compile and run our Hello World program on a Linux operating system. For this, we'll look at the directory first. The directory contains our source file, main.cpp, and it contains the project file, x helloworldpro To compile the program, we first need a make file. So let's have a look at the project file and then generate a make file. Ooh, bad. This is our project file. It only contains two lines, as I said earlier. The template line tells QMake this is an application, compared to, for example, a library. The sources line says this is the one source file we have. If you had multiple, they would be listed here. We will now leave the editor and look at the directory again. We will now call QMake and that should generate a make file for us. QMake is already in the path, I've set that up earlier. And if you call QMake with a version switch, it will tell you which Qt version you're using. If you call QMake to generate a make file, it will use that Qt version. In this case, it's uh, Qt 4.6.2 that comes with the Qt SDK. Okay, let's call QMake, give it the name of the project file, and that should generate a make file for us. There is no error message. This means there is no error. Um, QMake is rather quiet unless there is something that goes wrong. If you look at the directory again, there is a make file. This make file has been generated by QMake, and we can now run make to build the software. If you look at the directory, there is no application in there yet. We have a source file, we have the project file, and a make file. I will now call make. This is the typical Linux make tool, so we're not using anything special. And it compiles and links the software. And now we should have a Hello World program. It's over here. And we will now run it. And there you go. This is your first Qt application. Five lines of code, a call to QMake, a call to make, that generates the application and then it runs. You see that the application did not exit. If you look at the terminal window back there, it's waiting for the application to exit. This means that the application is now at the return app.exec line, waiting for us to terminate the application. The application will, by default, terminate when the last window has been closed. We will close the last window now, and then in our terminal window, the call to the program should return. So now you've seen how to generate a make file from your project file, and how to build the software using make, how to run the application after you created it. So you've seen Hello World from the source code to the build process to Hello World running on the screen. This concludes the demo. We're now going to give you a few more tips and tricks how to get started with Qt. Okay, once you got started with Qt, you will realize that Qt provides a lot of functionality and that you will have a lot of questions. The first question that comes to your mind is how much C++ do I need to know? Am I, am I good enough to work with Qt? Um, but there will be other questions. You will have to learn about the different modules of Qt and you might want to connect to the Qt community. So we'll give you a few practical tips now for where to start. Okay, so how much C++ do you need to know? You need to know about objects and classes. You will be inheriting your own classes, for example, to implement your own widgets. You will be calling member functions, so you need to understand the difference between a pointer to an object and the object itself. You will be overloading virtual methods, for example, to re-implement event handlers. So you need to understand polymorphism, at least to an extent. You will encounter operator overloading and templates in Qt, although you will get by with being able to instantiate templates. You don't really have to write them by yourself. There are a couple of C++ features that Qt is not using. One of them is runtime type information. For various historical and technical reasons, you will not encounter that in Qt. There are other mechanisms that Qt provides to do the same thing. You will not find very complex templates, especially no uh, template metaprogramming, and Qt itself does not use exceptions in the GUI framework. To report errors, you will have to use other mechanisms. That is about the extent to which you need to know C++. The Qt API is easy to learn, so if you have some experience with the language and 
as being a programmer, you'll be fine with getting started with Qt. And the other concepts that you might need to know, you'll be able to learn on the go. To help you get started with Qt, Qt ships an extensive set of references. All the API is documented and the documentation is part of your source code distribution, so you already have it on your hard disk. Qt comes with a tool called Qt Assistant that you can use to browse an index of all the functions and um, class names for Qt. And if you want to learn about an individual module of Qt, the best way is probably to look at the different how-tos and tutorials that are also shipped with Qt to learn, for example, on how to access a database from a Qt application. And if you still have questions, there are forums and there's the Qt community where you can ask questions. One forum you can use to ask your question, questions about Qt is Qt Center. Qt Center is used by many Qt developers to ask and to answer questions, and it also contains a large archive of already asked questions. So you might even find answers to your questions before you have to ask them. Another great resource to find already existing solutions in, in Qt is to look at the KDE project source code. KDE is a very big free software project that's completely based on Qt. If you want to get even closer to the developers that are using Qt or developing Qt themselves, you might want to join the IRC channels on either the kde.org or the freenode.org um, IRC servers. The channels are called hash Qt. And one of the biggest advantages of using Qt for development is that Qt comes with the source code. So if you need to find out why a certain call that you're doing into a Qt module is behaving in the way you experience it, you can actually step into the Qt source code with a debugger and see what exactly happens behind the scenes. This is a big advantage, so you might want to learn how to make use of that. We hope that you enjoyed this taste of the Qt Essentials training. For the full experience, including labs, Q&As, and additional information, we recommend that you attend the full multi-day Qt Essentials training course. The course is available from KDAB or any of the other Qt training partners. For full information, check out qt.nocare.com. Thanks for watching.